Greetings family, peace, love, and positive thinking. This is Guru and thanks for visiting my channel. Today's vlog is about slurs, blackface, and gorilla mask. The rise and why so much blatant racism is bubbling to the surface. The academic year opened with racial ugliness and we're going to get to this story in just a moment. So family, you remember recently I did a vlog. If you didn't catch it, I'd suggest that you take a minute to take a look at it. It's about this uh, barefooted East Tennessee State University student who in a gorilla uh, mask confronted Black Lives Matter in September. Uh, he was dangling bananas in front of their faces with a rope and uh, brandishing a sign that said, quote, lives matter. So um, let's go to the story of how this all began. So first of all, um, after, po after police shot a black man in Charlotte, uh, Jeremiah Pearson was so upset by yet another death that he went to a friend at East Tennessee State University and asked if he would help him organize a peaceful Black Lives Matter protest. They prepared for a backlash. They did not prepare for this. On the second day, a white student walked out of the library barefoot, wearing overalls, a gorilla mask, and carrying a burlap sack with a confederate flag on it with um, signs of marijuana leaves and information about marijuana. He was making monkey noises and he offered protesters bananas. He used a racial slur. He tied a, a rope around a banana and dangled it in, in uh, he dangled it in sophomore Jaden, Jalen Grimes' face. This is Jalen Grimes pictured here. So family, it was that moment and their measured response was a powerful symbol of the challenges and possibilities that face universities and the nation in what many believe is an increasingly volatile racial climate. So this academic year opened with an onslaught of racially charged incidents at colleges across the country. A professor at Eastern Michigan University found a racial slur spray painted on the side of a building on campus along with KKK in large letters. A former Kansas State University student shared a photo of herself and a friend with their faces painted black, blackface, and a racial slur. Students at the University of Michigan found posters on campus warning white women not to date black men. On a wall at Ohio University, someone painted a person hanging from a, a noose. So family, there are, there are other examples as well, but I'm going to skip over that and instead go to the battery. The battery of ugly incidents this fall is a reflection of our times, said Benjamin D. Reese Jr., Vice President of Institutional Equity and Chief Diversity Officer for Duke University and Duke University Health System. National protests over police violence and race have changed the climate on many campuses, he said, and so has political rhetoric. And as racial tensions and polarization ramp up, things that had been muted are now increasingly likely to be expressed intensely and directly. Which family now brings me up the second part of this, which, which is titled, Why So Much Blatant Racism Is Bubbling to the Surface. Several recent outbursts of overt racism show how social media and the presidential race are stirring up sentiments that were deeply buried. The firing of a teacher's aide in Forsyth County, Georgia, the censoring of a small town mayor in Pennsylvania, the arrest of an East Tennessee State University student, all three after comparing black people two apes. These recent examples of blatant racism have been met by swift public 
condemnations. Americans, on the whole, remain firmly intolerant of intolerance. So family, I'm going to skip over some parts, but I do want to cover certain things. Uh, so this part is the evolving shape of civility. Okay, the recent incidents have captured attention, but also spawned a backlash. On Facebook, West York, Pennsylvania Mayor Char Charles Wasco, or Wacko, has compared the Obama family to orangutans and has suggested President Obama should be lynched. He remains unrepentant, claiming a, quote, witch hunt against him. The racist stuff, yeah, I'll admit I did that, and I don't care what people label me as, unquote, he told WHTM-TV. During an emergency meet, uh, town hearing on Monday, many residents said the tone of the presidential race is giving license to racist rhetoric. Pennsylvania State Rep Kevin Sh uh, Schreiber, a Democrat, called Mr. Wacko, Wasco, Facebook outbursts, quote, the legacy of angry, bigoted speech and rhetoric that is so quickly and casually spawned, spewed, and circulated today, unquote. I agree to that. Meanwhile, school officials said a teacher's aide in Georgia's Forsyth County made repeated comments likening First Lady Michelle Obama to a, quote, poor, poor gorilla, unquote. The school district acted decisively to fire her. For his part, the East Tennessee student was charged with one count of civil rights intimidation, a crime in Tennessee. He admitted to trying to provoke a largely African American crowd to violence by wearing a gorilla mask and carrying a banana on a string. He admitted it, which he offered to black people saying, here you go, sir. Now, while extreme in many respects, these incidents point to a debate over the shifting bounds of civility. What? You call that? You call any of this civility? Really? Okay. They are in part a backlash against the perception of political correctness run amok. Run amok. Political correctness. Maybe that's the wrong term to put it at. Maybe it's called decency and respect for others. Maybe we need to re reclassify that term and not call it political correctness, but instead decency and respect for others. I digress. Let's move on. The rise in discussion on college campuses of microaggressions slated caused by racial insensitivity and trigger warnings. Okay, that warns survivors of rape or abuse of depictions in books, art, or movies could be trigger, could trigger a reaction, rather. is seen as a prime example of sacrificing robust free speech for cultural oversensitivity. The incidents point to the growing willingness among some Americans to challenge these emerging social norms and boundaries. And Donald Trump, with his brash style, has helped lead the charge. Quote, what Trump has done is emboldening a number of individuals and groups who might hold similar views to express them in a way that would not have been socially acceptable only a couple months ago, never mind a couple years ago, unquote, says Joshua Inwood, a geographer and ethics court faculty member at Penn State in University Park, Pennsylvania, quote, the election of Obama and the rise of Trump has unleashed a whole set of discourses that were obviously prevalent in the United States of America, but were not giving such mainstream play, unquote. To critics, the trend has simply been an attempt to find acceptable means of public expression for latent racism. So, 
To critics, the trend has simply been an attempt to find acceptable means of public expression for latent racism. Broader attacks on political correctness are simply an attempt to hide the sentiment that whites are mad, that they don't get to speak any way they want to in offensive, horrible, dangerous, threatening, and illegal ways about folks of color, says Matthew Huey, Huey, a University of Connecticut sociologist, quote, Trump is drawing from that well, unquote. The danger is that the incidents may not remain confined to verbal attacks. Upticks of rhetoric tend to end in some kind of violent outbursts, says Professor Enwood. So family, ending this off, I'm going to speak about the response to the incidents. So, the 1906 riots also resulted in public censure of the most incendiary of the newspapers, the Atlanta Evening News, which closed weeks after the violence. In West York, the town council voted Monday to censure Mr. Wasco. Wacko. <laughs> Hundreds of residents packed the meeting to voice their disgust. Quote, he left no one behind in his hate, unquote, town council president Sean Mock told reporters. And the reaction to the gorilla mask young man in Johnson City, ten Tennessee, also spoke volumes. The largely African-American crowd ignored the man's provocations until police arrived to arrest him. Well, with all due respect to that, I just want to say that I saw the uh, Facebook live uh, feed that the brother man was uh, posting during the moment it was happening, and he wanted to clobber this guy. He held back all he could to not kick this guy's behind. He did. So with that said, I, I just want to say that, yes, it was nice that, that the largely Af African-American crowd left that that guy, that punk alone, and uh, let him make a monkey of himself. Because that's all he did. Okay, and then the last but not least, it says, quote, There may, in part, just be a perception that there's more people speaking racist thoughts now that they have a social media amplifier that they didn't have in the past, unquote, says Mr. Polins Polis Polisins Polisinski, Polisinski, okay, whatever his name is, at the First Amendment Center, quote, I think we're right to take it seriously, and, we're, and we have every right to be offended, but I also think there is some value in hearing this in the marketplace of ideas, even though it brings pain and embarrassment and shame to those who think this language is out of bounds, unquote. So family, I'm going on. 14, 15 minutes on this vlog. I, I try not to make my vlogs too long as you've noticed, but I would like to know what you think, your ideas, your thoughts. Um, we have seen a rise in uh, racism bubbling to the surface. It's not only bubbled, bubbled to the surface, it has exploded on the surface. And uh, I just want to know what you guys think about this. I hope you like this vlog. I really appreciate your support. I appreciate your time watching my vlogs. Please like, share, and if you haven't already, subscribe. This is Guru. Peace, love, and positive thinking. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, I'm out.